thought it wasn't that bad. I thought there were some redeeming qualities. But I was wrong. I was so, so wrong. <laughs> Hey guys, finishing off my review of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy, we now come to the dreaded Spider-Man 3. Now a lot of fans of the original two films were quite excited to see the inclusion of Venom. However, just leading up to it, I started to notice that there was a lot of villains in this. There was Harry as Green Goblin 2. There was the Sandman as well as Venom. Also, seeing Topher Grace cast as Eddie Brock pretty much put my hopes for that character being done well into the ground. Eddie Brock is supposed to be a big intimidating dude. Topher Grace is smaller than Tobey Maguire. I don't know what the studios were thinking when they thought that Eric Foreman would be a formidable opponent to Tobey Maguire. Tobey Maguire already has a pretty kind of nerdy bitchy little side. It doesn't help that the person who's supposed to be this big bully, this intelligent bully as well though, is played by Topher Grace who plays the character as a hack a loser, no means of sympathizing with him at all. Now that was something that the previous film had done very well. Dr. Octavius was a villain you could f feel for, you had some sort of investment with the character. While he was doing evil deeds, you knew that there was something good inside him and that there was something to kind of make you care about the character rather than just wanting him to die. The instant that Tover Grace enters the screen, he sees his girlfriend, Gwen Stacy, hanging off of a building, about to fall to her death, and the guy doesn't give a shit. He's just like, oh cool, I'll take a photo with a terrible camera. It's an obvious thing that Sony always puts their products in this film, but for some reason the props department didn't want to give Topher a Sony camera, so instead they gave him a Canon camera, but just covered up Canon. Which, I don't know how they got away with that shit. But let's start with the film. We see that Peter Parker and Mary Jezebel Watson are happy together. They're having a good life. Except that Mary Jane is constantly getting up miffed about Peter's popularity as being Spider-Man and while she's failing in all these different directions she's still being a selfish Jezebel and she doesn't care that what Peter is doing what Peter is doing as Spider-Man is completely selfless while yeah he gets attention and he gets fame he's throwing his life on the line all the time whereas you're putting yourself up on stage but apparently that's more important than saving people's lives again the terrible terrible work done with mary jane watson just comes to a full freaking head in this film and then there's poor james franco oh dude you had like a goddamn gymnastic routine to go through with this character harry osborne goes through so many character changes in this film it must have hurt his head. I know that James Franco was going to university while these films were being made, so I can only imagine how must it hurt to do a character who starts out evil, has his memory erased, becomes evil again, has a redemption, and then dies. That is so much to pen into for one character. Along with Sandman, the film ruins every aspect that was Peter Parker's revenge against the guy who killed Uncle Ben by adding in this bullshit side little story of the Sandman accidentally pulling the gun while he's right in front of an old man. The biggest problem with this film is that there's too many villains. There is three separate storylines here. There's three separate storylines that could have been developed into full films. However, Raimi kind of wanted the Sandman in it. He really wanted Sandman. And I think he also wanted Harry because he had been setting up that arc. And then he throws in Venom because Sony told him to. Him and his brother Ivan try so hard to make a film coherent, but it just doesn't work. The fact that these guys have to shove in so many aspects of the film, and then on top of that, everything is campy. You remember how I said the first film was campy but it had a funny edge to it? It's not. It's not funny. And I'm not just talking about the whole emo hair thing or the weird dance sequence. I mean every bit of dialogue. The fact that Peter tells Mary Jane, hey, I'm gonna come in, swing in for the key, and he knows Mary Jane's there, yet he tells Gwen Stacy to kiss him. You're an asshole, dude. Everyone in this film is an asshole. The butler is an asshole. James Franco is an asshole. Mary Jane Watson's an asshole. Silver Grace is an asshole. Peter Parker's an asshole. Everyone in this film is an asshole, 
Except kind of the guy who's supposed to be an asshole, and that's J.K. Simmons. And for a film that's under two and a half hours, I'm amazed he's in the film as it is. He gets maybe one or two good jokes, but otherwise it's not that great of a time for him, and that relegates just into all the other problems of this film. Now obviously everyone rags on this movie for different reasons, but I want to talk a little bit about the good parts, and that's the visual effects in most scenes. The Sandman creation scene, as well as almost everything involving Venom, has aged very well. These effects are 11 years old now, and yet when you see the webbing of the Venom symbiote attach onto Peter, or attach onto clothing, onto anything, it moves with a way that is horrifying and intriguing, and it looks good. Same for the Sandman scene, when he first forms himself, apparently this was the most expensive visual effect of the entire year, and you can see why. There's so much character into this scene. There's not a word is said, but we can see the emotion and the character of a CG entity sans castle, and you can actually have some kind of emotion with the scene, because Danny Elfman's music is once again really good. The action, for the most part, is shot pretty cool. There's some good parts. There's some parts that are really kind of bring you into it in terms of the intensity, but then it constantly throws in something bullshit or something stupid and cheesy. Like the first fight between Peter and Harry Osborn. It's a cool fight, admittedly, but every time they bring up this ring, it just, it, it, it kind of throws off the whole feeling of the fight scene. Now it's known that Sam Raimi Rinson repeated basically the same story three times. He even recycles action sequences. When Doc Ock and Peter Parker or Spider-Man are falling down the building and they're fighting as they're falling, he does that three times in this movie. It's like, hey, you remember when it was really cool the first time? And then by the third time, you're just so sick of it. So there's so many problems that are with this film, not just in terms of just the cheesy scenes or the bad writing or the overstuffing of storylines. No one really tries to give much of an effort in terms of really establishing new elements of the characters or trying to be a better character. Spider-Man 3 is definitely worthy of all of its problems, and it's got even more that most people don't know about. And of course, there's no wonder why that there was never a fourth film made. This is basically the Batman and Robin of the Sam Raimi trilogy. Had there been a fourth one, I don't know, had Sam Raimi actually had the ability to make the movie that he wanted, I don't know. The fact that it was just him and his brother on top of it, there wasn't anyone else involved, it kind of makes me feel that Sam was just kind of tired. He's even commented on saying that he wasn't really fond of making these movies. He liked the idea of it, but because he had to change his camera style, his directing style so much to fit this norm that he felt that he was just making something that wasn't his own. So in the end, I'm gonna give Spider-Man 3 a 2 out of 7. That's for the good visuals and the very small tidbits of good story here and there, but they're very, really, really fucking hard to find. Anyways, guys, that is my long-winded review for Spider-Man 3. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Hey, guys, once again, doing a shout-out for Camp Death 3 in 2D, which comes out on Amazon Prime on February 15th. This is an indie horror film that's purposely made in the style of really bad horror films. They let me watch it a little bit earlier on and gave a shout-out to it, so I'm continuing to do shout-outs about it before it comes out on Amazon Prime. You guys should definitely check it out. It's purposely a bad movie, but it is a funny, fun bad movie. It's kind of like Thanks Killing. So definitely check these guys out. I've left a link to their Facebook page in the description below. Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed this review. I'll see you guys next time.